Many times pastor will say to me, good job, well done. And deep down, I love to hear those things. We all love to be given compliments when we have done something well. We all love to be recognized when we have done something good. It is a prideful thing, maybe even a sinful pride thing, but those are the things that we really love to tell others about. Those are the things we like to boast about. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to things in life that we have done bad, whether those things were unintentional or intentional, those are the things we tend to want to keep private. Those are the things we don't want to tell other people. Those are the things we tend to want to forget. And as I said, we never want to mention those things out loud again. But what about those times when we are falsely accused? How do we react in those situations? I don't know about you, but I tend to be highly offended when someone has accused me of doing something I have not done. My pride speaks up for me and wants me to defend my good name, my integrity. And when those things come to me like that, again, I tend to be highly offended. As much as I want to boast about the good things that I have done in life, even more so will I look for an attempt or look for occasions to defend my good name. That's who we are. We vigorously defend ourselves when we have been falsely accused. Who of us could say that we wouldn't utter a word in our defense in those circumstances? No, we would stand, we would draw a line in the sand and say, I am innocent. But Jesus, our Lamb of Atonement, he did the opposite of what we tend to do. He was being attacked on all sides by those who were looking for reasons, searching for reasons to condemn him and to put him to death. When all legitimate measures fell short, they looked for false reasons, lies for which they could accuse Jesus, false accusations which would ultimately lead to his death on the cross. Imagine being in a court of law where your very life depended on the outcome. Again, who of us would stand and say nothing in our defense? I can see myself personally saying things like, I didn't do it, I wasn't there, you got the wrong person. That's how I would handle that situation. Well, fellow believers in Christ, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus stood silently as the chief priests and the elders of the law hunted for reasons to put him to death. Jesus stood silently and steadfastly as they were hurling false accusations against him. He wasn't moved by selfish ambitions to prove himself innocent. He was moved by love for us, a love that compelled him to set aside his Godhead and endure flogging and ridicule and even death for us, a love that wouldn't allow him to speak up in his own defense, a love that caused him to remain silent. God stood silent as he was being accused and being led away to his death, a death that we should have all suffered. Where we should have died, Jesus stood silently, resolutely, and he stood there in our place. The only question that Jesus answered that Pilate posed to him was, are you the king of the Jews? To which he answered, you have said so. That was the only question that really mattered. Unfortunately, Pontius Pilate, the chief priests, the elders of the law, they did not understand the answer that Jesus had given to them. Jesus is not only the king of the Jews, he is also our king, our savior. Our king who stood silently, steadfastly, resolutely in our place so that one day we could stand with him in glory in heaven forever and ever.